is out of the bag. The BMF belt is now officially back. Dana White announced that the rematch between Dustin Poirier and Justin Gathia will happen in honor of the vacant BMF title. The first matchup between the Diamond and the Highlight was perhaps one for the ages. Both these men were and still are known for bringing violence to each and every single one of their fights with no exception. Immediately, we saw the boxing prowess of Dustin Poirier paired with the brawler style of Justin Gaethje. Poirier was confident in his skills from a pure boxing perspective as he bloodied up the highlight early on in the bout. He wanted to keep punching him so that you get tired. Despite being clearly hurt, Gaetje would still swing his traditional looping left. He is big and powerful at 155 pounds. Gaetje would have success with his leg kicks, those he throws usually with reckless abandonment. Both men were swinging and every single blow was thrown with the intention of ending the fight. Gaetje's best punch is the left hook. Okay. This legendary chin of Justin Gaetje has been tested tonight. It is held up through the fight's first seven minutes. Again, Justin's inside low kicks would be proven as the most effective move by the highlight. Stop kicking him. Stop. He's going to need him to switch. Dustin Poirier's got to switch stances. Oh. He's got to switch stances. Poirier's ability to control the range with his jab is what was the most attractive element of this bout. In the third round, it was pretty evident both men were completely gassed. And with two more rounds to go, most fans knew a finish was close. At the very start of round four, the diamond smelled blood and was eager for the finish. Despite the fact that he has a lot of experience in five round fights, this is the first time oh! he's seen a fourth. Big left hand lands by Poirier. He's looking for the finish here. Gaethje hurt. He'd get the job done, viciously unloading on Gaethje and staking his claim for the UFC lightweight title contendership. Now, what exactly happened after this fight for both Justin and Dustin? The Diamond would go on to collect a solidified knockout win over former champ Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez is done. Eddie Alvarez Big is done. Right hand. Alvarez, Alvarez is still swinging though. Look at this. What a warrior, Eddie Alvarez. That's the Poirier finish. This would buy Poirier a ticket for the interim belt, as the champ Khabib served time off for his negligence. I told you so. I told you so. Poirier would put on an all-time war against Holloway and would take blessed to the judges' scorecards. The Diamond would now have UFC interim gold wrapped around his waist and bought his first chance at a UFC belt. Evidently, there was a lot of mutual respect between both men. In this fight, the Eagle did what he did best, with the relentless pressure on the ground. It hurts, but it doesn't choke. It just makes things miserable, and that's what... At one point, it even seemed that Dustin had sunk in a guillotine that would have ended it there. The guillotine's in, but it's not super tight. Yeah. However, once Khabib found his way out of the submission, he got his own entry to the back take. With that, the Diamond's first run at a belt was ruined. That's it. Mago Manov under the chin, there's the cut! But thankfully for us, his story was far from over. Poirier would immediately bounce back with a legendary bout against Dan Hooker. Despite getting in deep trouble at times, he'd find a way out of this situation. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, so in real trouble. The Diamond would find a way to get it done, as he took this fight to the distance. Back in the win column, Dustin would reach the pinnacle of his popularity. An innocent tweet from the Diamond would allow Dustin the opportunity to avenge his loss in 2014. A first-round finish from McGregor over a young Poirier would surely not be the last we'd see from the two men together inside the cage. Well, it seemed that Dustin would face an amicable Conor McGregor, one that we weren't quite used to. The presence of the leg kick was what brang the difference to this fight, nullifying McGregor's new boxing-based stance. Eventually, Dustin would put McGregor to sleep, avenging his loss and keeping title aspirations alive. He's got to go back to the oh! oh, big left and now a right. Hurt, man. Oh, 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 my God! That's the ball! Oh, oh, my God. God. The notorious one would promptly change his tune. At one apiece, a rematch was now born. During all the chaos of the pre-fight buildup, the Diamond's popularity grew even further. We all know how the trilogy ended. Pretty or not, Dustin was now on the verge of another chance at a belt. The scenes of the night live with us forever. Dustin was now scheduled to face the new lightweight champ, Charles Oliveira, a man that was on an electrifying streak. Poirier could smell the gold as the fight started. 
Yet again, the diamond would get close. Though once more, he'd fall short to a rear naked choke submission. Look at the transition that Charles Oliveira made to get Joe. Now he's hiding the hand. Now he's hiding the hand. Joe, Dustin's in trouble. Dustin's in real trouble. Dustin's in real trouble. It's under the neck. It's under the neck. It's under the neck. And watching from the stands was the second man behind this BMF title fight. Under the watchful eye of Trevor Whitman, Gethia completely changed his career following his loss to Dustin Poirier. Immediately against James Vick, we saw the development of new footwork. Immediately following the main event on FS1, or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Oh! Big right from against Barboza, we saw improvement in discipline, balancing his focus and aggression. Against Cerrone, we saw the improvement in timing and precision. He'd now bought himself the opportunity at interim lightweight gold against none other than El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. Coming into this fight, El Kukui was riding a 12-fight winning streak and was considered by many as the only man capable of removing Khabib from the top. Gethia was throwing heavy shots from the get-go. It was an absolute masterclass from the highlight in all ends, and improvement was obvious. Absolutely no one had done to Tony Ferguson what Justin Gethia was doing. It was complete and utter domination. By the fifth round, the commentary team was questioning how Tony Ferguson was still standing up. Herb Dean had seen enough, and with that, Gethia was the interim champ. That's it! Justin Gethia! Similar to Dustin Poirier, Gethia's title aspirations were first cut by a Nurmagomedov submission. He would quickly bounce back after a dominant win against Chandler. With now yet another opportunity at his hands, Gethia knew he'd have to get it done. Like Dustin Poirier, Gethia would have early success against Dobronx. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. Unfortunately for the highlight, history would repeat itself. Once more submitted, Gethia joined Dustin Poirier with the two failed title attempts. But one curious thing about the BMF challengers is that neither gives up. And following their losses to Charles Oliveira, both of them bounced back. The Diamond would return by submitting Michael Chandler following an all-out war. Oh, Dustin, no. oh, he's his oh, he's he's Gethia redeemed himself with a tough-fought battle against rising contender Rafael Fitziev. Again, he showed his improvement when it came to striking discipline. Instead of throwing bombs at all times, he was more calculated and patient. Now we get the rebirth of the BMF belt. Once more, the victor will garner the right to fight for undisputed gold. We know this fight will be absolute fireworks. As always, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and to subscribe.